transsexualism. Right? Uh, and transsexual theory, right? And the question is, how is the transsexual, the question is, how is the transsexual um, a critique against both patriarchy and gender essentialism, right? So I'll repeat that again. The question is, how is transsexualism a critique of both gender essentialism and patriarchy? Well, um, to think about it, if we are talking about the transsexual, what we'll have to do is identify, uh, and I'll have to introduce some new um, vocabulary, right? You have, for example, the male to female transsexual, right? The male to female transsexual was born biologically uh, a man, biologically male, and is now identified within, uh, as gender, being uh, a woman, right? So the male to female had male parts and now has quote unquote female parts. There's two types that uh, the male to female transsexual might be. You might have a what's known as a pre-op and a post-op transsexual. Right? You can have a pre-op and the operation is the SRS surgery, right? Pre-op and this means SRS. SRS. SRS stands for sexual reassignment surgery. So SRS stands for, and I'll write it down, sexual re -A -S -S -I -G -A -A -P. Right. Um, SRS stands for sexual reassignment surgery. So you have pre-op uh, pre transsexuals and post-op transsexuals. The question is, what does the pre-op transsexual look like? And what does the post-op transsexual look like? Okay. Remember, before we had sex and gender. We had sex and gender. And we said that, for example, a man under binary, uh, under, uh, binary essentialism, or gender essentialism, sorry, or binary essentialism, um, the individual sex was male and the gender was man. Now, what do we have in the pre-op transsexual, right? Well, the pre-op transsexual is sexed as a man, as male, so, sorry, is sexed as a male. The pre-operative, prior to having the sexual reassignment surgery, the pre-op transsexual has testicles and a penis has testicles and a penis. Um, the pre-op transsexual is probably going undergoing some type of uh, hormone therapy and is probably growing some stage of breasts or has uh, actually had um, breast surgery and has breasts, right? If the pre-op transsexual can pass, there's this idea of passing, right? The idea of passing, if the sexual, if the pre-op transsexual is passing as a woman, that means you look at this individual and despite the fact that he has a penis and testicles, he looks like a woman. You would never think for a second that it was a man. Um, she has breasts, she looks like a woman, she talks like a woman. Um, for all practical reasons, you would never question whether or not this person was a woman. Well, that person's gender is a woman. So you have, a, you have sex as male, and you have a gender as a woman. We know that this is in stark contrast to uh, gender essentialism, which said if your gender was woman, if your gender was woman, under gender essentialism notions, your sex had to be female, right? What we're saying for the pre-op transsexual is that the pre-op transsexual can have the sex man, can have the sex man, but instead of having the gender man, can have the gender woman. So my sex is male and my gender is woman. Right? So it's like this. It's a little bit of both. Obviously that is a fundamental counterexample, an argument against gender essentialism. Right? The pre-op transsexual is an argument 
against gender essentialism because this person is sexed male but is identified within society as a woman. The post-op transsexual is a bit different, right? The post-op transsexual is sexed female because the post-op, post-operative sexual reassignment surgery has had his um, testicles and his penis removed, right? Has, um, through the genius of Western medicine, created a vagina, all right? Um, so that not only does this individual look like a woman, um, for all practical purposes, this individual functions, functions like a woman, has a vagina, has breasts. Um, you would never um, know the difference between uh, a post-op transsexual and an actual woman, right? Unless this person told you. If the post-op transsexual is passing, right? So that the pre-op transsexual is a critique against gender essentialism. But it's not that much of a critique against gender essentialism if the pre-op transsexualism pre-op transsexual is attempting to pass, right? If the pre-op transsexual is attempting to look and act like a woman. Because then what ends up happening is that the pre-op transsexual, like the post-op transsexual, fits into sort of the socially constructed concepts of gender as either a man or a woman, right? The argument is, however, that ideologically, theoretically, the pre-op transsexual is a critique against gender essentialism because the pre-op transsexual is sexed as male to female, that is, is sexed as a male, but is identified socially as a woman, right, which is a contradiction. There is, however, a more direct critique against uh, both patriarchy and gender essentialism um, in what's known as the radical transsexual. The radical transsexual. The radical transsexual will be, uh, almost all of the time, pre-op transsexuals, right, will be either male to female or female to male, retain their original sex, right, so I've retained my vagina or I've retained my penis, and I've been identified within society as not just this other gender, right, so that the radical uh, transsexual is different from the pre-op transsexual because a radical transsexual will be, let's say, uh, a six-foot man uh, with a full beard and a very bulging Adam's apple with very large natural breasts that have been grown um, through hormone therapy, maybe a high-pitched voice, long, long, um, wearing a dress and heels, right? We, it's very rare that you see, I would imagine that most of you watching this video have never actually seen a radical transsexual because so many transsexuals are attempting to pass. But the radical transsexual um, has typically undergone some type of hormone therapy while retaining their original parts, in the case of male to female, um, while retaining uh, her penis, you would technically say her penis, right, because it's a man, it's male, the individual, rather, is male while being identified as both male and female, right? Being identified as both male and female. The question that this person might get is, what are you? Or what is that, right? What, what is that? Are, are you a man? Are you a woman? Uh, I don't know what you are, right? Because you're showing me, I see breasts, and you would imagine that there's some cleavage being shown, right? So you see breasts, uh, you hear the voice, However, there's a beard and there's an Adam's apple, and then you see high heel shoes, and you're totally confused, right? You don't know what category do I put you in? Are you a man or are you a woman? Radical transsexuals are a very apparent attack against um, both gender essentialism and patriarchy because there is a willful refusal to be categorized, right? There's a willful refusal to be categorized by the radical transsexual, whereas some um, pre-ops and all post-ops are attempting to pass, right? They're attempting to be identified with uh, a new gender, right? 